Because you can fake for a long time, but one day you're going to show yourself to be a phony. That's for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what these, you know, a lot of people are doing these days. Watch people. No. You probably won't be here right now. Mm We are here today about a grand jury indictment that was returned um, that included not just Jeffrey Williams, which is of some notoriety and media attention, but about 28 defendants that operated within our community between the time period of 2012 and 2022. It is our allegation that they operated as a criminal street gang and commenced to do havoc in our community. That havoc includes um, crimes of violence, um, crimes of thefts, crimes involving drugs. I've made no secret about it, nor any apology that as the district attorney of Fulton County, my number one focus is targeting gangs. I'll tell you the response to any allegation is Mr. Williams committed no crime whatsoever, and we will fight to my last drop of blood to clear him. It's the answer to truth. It ain't no captain. Either. Somebody gonna when you did interview, they gonna say when they oh, but he wasn't lying. Brr, this already they, come on, man. It's just how God work. You know what I'm saying, bro? God working mysterious ways. So you I think that she tried to use some of the things? Do, are, you think she that couldn't. she She can't. That's conflicting. That's that's like conflict of interest. You were just my lawyer. So how can you turn around and try to in in in, in indict him? For, don't sound like you just my use my lawyer. You just. Represent me. Fanny Willis was the was the lawyer of one of the founding members of YSL, and then she turns around years later and indicts the it YSL. Even, yeah, it wasn't even like a year. It wasn't even years later. This was probably like yeah, it was like two, three years later. It was years later. It's about two. Like, how 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 has it nobody said anything about that? How is that how is that not on with the news? How how is that not something that's brought up? If Fanny Willis was representing members of the YSL, then why is she now the D a head DA of indicting and, and arresting members of the y, YSL? Like you could base she could she could basically try to use the information that she used she, to defend you to indict she, people. But she ain't have no, she can't use no information. If what you, you ain't got nothing on me saying I'm, yeah. I'm doing nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Respect. Do it you just think, be conflict of interest, period. Do you think she got like something personal on your show? I don't know. I don't know. She's a, from all I know, bro, this is what I'm saying. This was just my lawyer, bro. This was for real my lawyer. My, my boy, I ain't no, I ain't no Kevin in this. Folk know this for real. So that was for real, just my lawyer, bro. I never seen this lady act like this. This is weird to me. That I know all this about politics and all this old funny stuff is serious politics is serious bro i've never seen this like this just was my real lawyer i'm sitting here talking to her like how we talking man finna this lady i used to talk this lady like an auntie like a, you feel what i'm saying so now that i'm seeing her dude i don't know what's going on bro all this is puzzling and scary as hell like and it's a lot of bullshit they putting out here and just saying like she ain't right bro this is weird to me Following the arrest of Young Thug, Gunna, and over two dozen YSL members in May of 2022, Willis told WSB TV that she'd been getting numerous threats on her life over it. I'm much more cautious now than I've ever been in my life of paying attention to my surroundings. It's required for me to stay alive. Funny Willis says she ran for Fulton County District Attorney in significant part to help victims and to prevent other people from becoming victims. But now she's become victim of threats. What are some of the things that have been said in threats? Basically that they're going to murder me, that the DA is going to get got. Because of how she does her job and she's living her life amid extraordinary security measures. And I'm not going to be intimidated from doing it and doing it in the correct fashion and holding people accountable. She says menacing communications about her, mostly on social media, ramped up a lot after the high profile racketeering indictment involving some celebrity rappers and YSL, an alleged criminal street gang. We don't believe that these threats were directed by anyone that is in the YSL indictment. By people sympathetic, potentially, or affiliated? I would say that people that are very sympathetic, um, maybe admirers of YSL and connected to um, them in some sense. The number of YSL associates taking their case to trial has dwindled from 28 to a possible 14 after many, including Gunna, have taken plea deals, but some still don't have proper legal representation. However, two of the defendants did not accept plea deals when offered. Tenquarius, Nard Mender, and Durante Baby both rejected the deals offered to them in December, which would have seen them released from prison. They will now head to trial alongside Thugger, with Tenquarius facing 50 years and Durante facing a life sentence. So what are your thoughts on Mondo revealing that Fannie Willis used to be his lawyer? And do you think this is a clear conflict of interest in the YSL Rico case? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and keep it locked to Hip Hop DX.
3-6-1 echo. Um, it requires uh, the trial court to explain its reasons for the grant denial of bond to assist in appellate review. That's Lane at 247 Georgia at uh, 389. That granting or denial of bail will not be set aside unless there's a manifest and flagrant abuse of discretion. And that's a very old case, Jernigan versus the state, 118 Georgia, 307 pinpoint 308 1903. Um, Ayala requires, and we all know this, and this has been stated in earlier hearings, uh, that the defendant has the burden of coming forward initially with evidence to show that he or she possesses, poses, I should say, no significant risk of, fl- of fleeing, threatening the community, committing another crime, or intimidating a witness. This burden of production means that the person charged with murder must present evidence of the bond hearing on the factors that indicate roots in the community, which Mr. Williams has done on prior occasions. occasions. These factors include... These factors... Include the defendant's length and character of the residents in the community, employment status and history, past history of responding to legal process, and prior criminal record. Court cites Lane 247 Georgia at 388. Once the defendant meets the burden of production, the estate may present evidence to rebut it, placing, and then the court goes on to say that this is proper to place the burden of production on the defendant. So at that point in time, uh, once that occurs, uh, and um, To protect the presumption of innocence, Ayala goes on to say the state has the burden of persuasion in convincing the Superior Court that the defendant is not entitled to pretrial release. This requirement means the state has the burden of proving by preponderance of the evidence that the trial court should deny bail either to secure the defendant's appearance in court or to protect the community. Depending on the quality of the defendant's evidence, the state may not need to present any evidence to carry its burden of persuasion. so I have determined in this case that Mr. Williams has, in fact, met the preliminary standards to show that um, he has uh, ties to the community uh, and roots in the, in the community. And I find that his uh, employment status and history are, are sufficient. Um, the thing that still troubles the court and has been presented by presented to the state uh, by the state in this particular pro- continued proffer is that um, one of the factors I'm supposed to consider is or decide is whether or not Mr. Williams poses a significant risk of, of um, intimidation or threatening of witnesses in particular. The state's proffer of recent conversations and um, interviews with witnesses in this case um, attributing uh, conduct to Mr. Williams asking for permission to harm others, the court finds that that would po- make him and pose a significant risk to the community. For that reason, I'm going to deny bond, continue to deny bond at this time. That's my ruling. The deal that set Gunna free, a major development in a huge racketeering case. The Atlanta-born rapper Gunna, whose given name is Sergio Kitchens, made a deal with prosecutors and walked out of the Fulton County Jail late this afternoon. Now, Gunna will not have to stand trial early next year with rapper Young Thug and more than two dozen other defendants who prosecutors say were part of a racketeering conspiracy. But Gunna wants everyone to know that while he did make a deal with prosecutors, he will not have to testify against any of the others. Our John Shirek is on the story for us tonight. Gunna, Sergio Kitchens, leaving the Fulton County Jail seven months after he'd surrendered. He is a free man. The man Fulton County prosecutors had said was deeply involved with rapper Young Thug and 26 others in a violent gang called YSL. Gunna pleaded guilty to one count of racketeering, and it was an Alford plea, meaning Gunna does not admit to doing anything wrong despite pleading guilty to the charge. I'm pleading guilty, but not admitting I'm guilty. It's just legal jargon, legal maneuvering, but it's the same as a regular guilty plea. Atlanta Most attorney Daryl Cohen, who is not part of the case, says prosecutors likely just wanted Gunna out of the way as they focus on trying to convict the others. Because he's a minor player, so it's just going to clear the deck, if you will, to give us, that is the prosecution, an opportunity to go after the big players in this case. Gunna was charged with just one count of racketeering in the massive indictment. He was accused of dealing in drugs and stolen merchandise along with other alleged gang members. By contrast, young thug Jeffrey Williams was indicted on eight counts. Gunna made it clear in a public statement released by his attorney that his deal with prosecutors does not require him to be a prosecution witness against the others. Quote, I have not 
not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case. He's trying to save his cred and his world. Gunna says that as part of his deal with prosecutors, he will now, as he put it, try to educate young people that gangs and violence only lead to destruction. In Atlanta, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. The Young Thug YSL RICO trial has been one of the most interesting court cases in music history. From many YSL members who considered Young Thug a brother are now turning on him, snitching for a lesser prison sentence, to even all of this new evidence now being pieced together. We now understand why this famous clip of Young Thug banging his head on the table in the courtroom was from, as information in the courtroom usually takes one to two weeks to be released and pieced together to the public, and we now have answers. Now, the video clip of Young Thug in question is this. Leave a like on the video if you're a fan of Young Thug. I'm curious how many fans are watching today. Now, sources are now beginning to claim that allegedly this is Young Thug's reaction to the courtroom releasing new information of YSL Woody. As YSL Woody has become a federal informant, and he's the reason that the feds were able to solve 50 crimes made by YSL, as well as other street teams in Atlanta. As shared in a DJ Academics tweet that states, truth teller YSL Woody hopped back out on Instagram last year after cooperating with the police for three hours in solving 50 crimes. Telling on Young Thug, YFN Lucci, as well as others. Ironically, in his caption, he claims that he didn't cry or cooperate. Now, just as his tweet stated, before YSL Woody became a snitch, he posted this to his Instagram in 2021. I sat in jail days, nights, months, and years without knowing the outcome. Didn't call on God, didn't cry or cooperate. I started working on understanding myself, realizing who I am and what I'm worth. Jail gave me time to to think, grow, and understand. Only point I have to prove is showing my people that whatever we put our mind to, we can do it. Stay away from bad energy, focus, and believe in yourself. Taking a photo right out front of a YSL mansion that's owned by Young Thug, which is very interesting as now YSL Woody has become a confirmed snitch in this court case. At this point, many YSL members that Young Thug thought of as brothers are now turning on him daily, as shared even by Young Thug's sister who spoke out about the clip and looking defeated in the courtroom, telling us to realize that Young Thug is going to court daily. Eight hours a day, people he called brothers turning on him and snitching. This is a very hard time for the YSL kingpin. And to make matters even worse, while Young Thug is battling one of the hardest court cases to beat all by himself, his old best friend Gunna, who snitched on him in this case, has now broken his silence. As on February 22nd, Gunna's lawyer released this new statement regarding Gunna's snitching. As DJ Academics tweeted, Gunna's lawyer puts out a statement saying, Gunna ain't no truth teller, and he won't help put King Slime behind bars. Y'all believe it? With this statement attached, and I quote, comment on article from Gunna's co-lead defense counsel, Steve. After reading Miss Wick's outstanding and insightful article, I am obligated to say for the record one more time, Gunna has never been interviewed by or cooperated with law enforcement or prosecutors in the RICO case, nor have his attorneys proffered information on his behalf. What was said at his Alford plea hearing was solely to resolve his own case. It could not be used by the prosecution against Young Thug or any defendant. Now, this is very, very interesting lawyer work. In case you're unaware, the case Gunna snitched on Young Thug in is true not to be the RICO case. Now, the lawyer does have a point, but it's actually a separate court case where Young Thug and Gunna were pulled over in their vehicle. Inside of the car was a firearm as well as narcotics. And this is where Gunna claimed in the courtroom that the firearm and narcotics are not his. So if they are not his, this would just land on Young Thug, obviously, as in the the court eyes, this is gonna snitching on Young Thug 100%.
and you have personal knowledge that members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in front of Yes, ma'am. You were present when law enforcement officers stopped the vehicle in which you were present along with Jeffrey Williams, where in hydrocarbon and a firearm were recovered. These items did not belong to you. Yes, ma'am. And do you acknowledge the following statement? I recognize, accept, and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered YSL to the detriment of my community. YSL again. Is that your statement or acknowledgement? Yes. So yes, Gunna didn't actually technically snitch on Young Thug in the RICO case, but he did snitch in a separate case. Now, the statement from his lawyer is the second time that we have heard from Gunna since his release, as Gunna's tried already testing the waters on social media to see a response from the YSL fans, and it did not go as planned. As after the Gunna snitching video went viral online, DJ Academics tweeted, YSL is having a beef on Instagram. Gunna came out and tried testing the water, claiming YSL the label and even said free young thug. Everybody in YSL is looking at Gunna like, buddy, you're the reason that he's in there. They all unfollowed him right after, even young thug's sister as well. Now this all began when Gunna tweeted, rest in peace Lil Keed, I love you and I miss you twin. Regarding to the late YSL rapper Lil Keed, who sadly passed at the start of the YSL Rico trial, Gunna as well as young thug have not been able to put out statements about this as they have actually been locked up since he passed. He then later posted on his Instagram a picture at his at-home studio with a caption stating, people acting like they switching to his side, but it's only one side. Hashtag YSL the label, free young thug and yak. Now this Instagram post got a lot of backlash from YSL members that are staying true to YSL as well as young thug. As YSL King Mondo replied to Gunna on Instagram stating and I quote, I ain't gonna bite my tongue. Baby boy, you don't need to be saying nothing about YSL or Free Young Thug after what you did and said. You really got some nerve. After some time passed from Mondo calling Gunna out, he made a return to social media. As someone caught footage of Gunna driving around in his drop top supercar, enjoying a carefree world ever since snitching. Revealing that Gunna wanted to save himself and no one else. Gunna knew how serious this court case has become. The rapper needed an out or he would also be looking at serving life in prison alongside Young Thug. Now with the video of Gunna going viral in his supercar, he would then post this to his Instagram story. Three laughing emojis practically laughing at the situation. It's also very important to note that Gunna isn't the only snitch in YSL. Allegedly, there's around 12 to 15. Not everyone has been named yet, but people in YSL started snitching the moment they walked into jail. On the day that the 28 members of YSL were raided and arrested, this was said the day after at the first court hearing. He's the one directing traffic. He is the one they're all afraid of. He's the one that's king slime. He is the most dangerous of the 28 judge. And I, I implore you not to grant him a bond. He is dangerous. If he gets a burner judge, and the court may know this, a lot of the communications that Mr. Williams is on is on FaceTime because it's not traceable. It's not trackable. Judge, I will also say that we have taken proffers from fellow members from Mr. Williams. Some are on this indictment, some are not. They have stated uniformly that Mr. Williams is dangerous. They are afraid of him, that if they cross him, he will them and their family. And they were very clear about that. Concerns that this court has is um, danger to persons and to intimidate other witnesses and obstruct the administration of justice. So um, I, and for those reasons in the aggregate, um, I'm going to deny bond at this time. Even from the start of the trial, it's been clear the feds only want Young Thug and no one else. This isn't a YSL takedown anymore. This is a Young Thug takedown, as the feds want him in prison to stop any sort of street activity among YSL or other street teams in Atlanta. Prosecutors raised concerns to the judge claiming that Young Thug is having his lawyers send out secretive tweets over a jail phone that contains secret messages to YSL members to continue breaking the law. Now, Young Thug released a tweet on his Twitter via his manager making the post for him stating, I'm talking with my roommate 
roommate and were wondering if you could swim 100 miles from the middle of the ocean back to shore at Michael Phelps. Now, what seems like an innocent tweet sent out by his manager turned very ugly as this is Young Thug's lawyer defending him in court about this single tweet. Williams is in a jail outside of Fulton County. There are zero cell phones in that jail. That last tweet that was sent out to Michael Phelps is recorded. It's been investigated by the sheriff of that county. And it was a conversation that's recorded between Mr. Williams and a member of his um, close family, uh, close friendships that he asked the other person who has control of his Twitter account. That That is not a reason to. Well, this is part of the conversation, Mr. Steele, and you and others are going to need to have with your clients because this is this is part of, of, of the state's concern. I mean, that, that was an innocent. That, that's nothing bad. Asking somebody to tweet to Michael Phelps, can you swim 100 miles in the ocean? That has nothing to do with intimidation. So I'd ask you to Well, if, if, if I can communicate through a family member or somebody else, then I can communicate something else. Everything okay? Else? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay, if your family was concerned that something was going on, you're, you're fine, right? Yes, I'm great. Okay, cool, cool. Allegedly, Young Thug is using his Twitter account via jail phones to send secretive tweets out with his manager. Not to mention, even during court hearings, YSL members allegedly really look like they're just trying to set up Young Thug for trouble. As at a recent court hearing, a YSL member tried slipping Young Thug something in front of a guard as well as judges. Now that was during the most recent court hearing. It kind of looks like the YSL member tried setting up Young Thug to give him a bad image in the courtroom in front of the jury. It is yet to be confirmed whether or not Young Thug was in on this or not. New at 10, Fox 5 has learned one of the men standing trial in a sweeping gang indictment is facing new charges tonight. Documents from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office show Christian Eppinger is accused of stabbing an inmate inside the jail on Tuesday. According to a report, a detention officer told Eppinger to get away from the other inmate, and he then pulled out a shank and stabbed the inmate in the chest. That inmate was taken to Grady for treatment. In addition to the YSL gang trial, Eppinger was previously charged with shooting Atlanta police officer David Rogers six times in February of last year. Officer Rogers survived his injuries. And a so the Young Thug Rico case has taken by most accounts an unusual twist, an alleged drug deal in open court. Prosecutors say they have the video to prove it. Yeah, Fox 5 News has obtained that video. Fox 5's Kevin Stewart joins us from the live desk with details, Kevin. Hey, this is unusual. This involves Young Thug and one of his co-defendants, a young man already serving time for murder. Cleef Adams is now charged with, among other things, possession of a controlled substance and willful obstruction of law enforcement. Watch this. In the back of the Fulton County courtroom, the man in the blue suit, that's Khalif Adams, a.k.a. Bobby Hunt, Young Thug's co-defendant. He's walking up to the counsel's table. You see him lean over toward Young Thug. You might not be able to see it here, but according to a court filing, Adams allegedly passed Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams, a Percocet. That's when law enforcement caught the alleged act. In fact, according to the court filing, quote, the hand-to-hand -hand drug exchange between defendant Adams and defendant Williams led to the discovery of even more contraband inside the courtroom. Percocet, marijuana, tobacco, and other contraband wrapped up in plastic and food seasonings to mask the odor of marijuana. The host of Fox 5's public affairs show, The Next Atlanta, George Cheedy, has closely followed the case against Young Thug. Cheedy says what is alleged to have happened in the courtroom is almost unheard of. You've covered a lot of trials. I've covered a lot of trials. Have you heard of anything like this before? So it happens, but it's so rare that it's it's like vanishingly rare. Um, in part because you don't have 
14 defendants on trial most of the time. The idea that it would happen in this courtroom under these circumstances is an extraordinary breach of security. All right, now, according to the court filing, Adams ended up in Grady after he appeared to have swallowed contraband. Now, we did reach out to both attorneys for both defendants and haven't heard back yet. Coming up at 6, what impact could this development have on the trial? From the live desk, Kevin Stewart, Fox 5 News. Kevin, thanks. So Young Thug's brother denies snitching after taking plea deal in YSL Rico case. Hey, what's up? I'm A-Dub and you gotta check this out. So Young Thug's brother has denied snitching after accepting a plea deal in the ongoing Rico case against the rapper's YSL Collective. According to WSB-TV, Unfunk, real name Quantavius Greer, pleaded guilty to one count of violating the Rico Act and one count of theft by receiving stolen property on Tuesday, December 20th. The YSL rapper, who appeared on last year's Slime Language 2 and has also collaborated with the likes of Future and Gunna, has been handed a 12-year sentence with two years commuted to time served and 10 years probation. Unfunk took to his Instagram story shortly after his release to respond to those accusing him of snitching on Young Thug. Damn, people really think I told on my own brother, SMH. Show me in the paperwork I told on anybody, lol. I'm not even finna entertain any of it. Peace and blessings. As part of the plea deal, there are a number of conditions Unfunk must meet. He's required to perform 750 hours of community service, can't possess a gun or commit any criminal acts, has a 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, and isn't allowed to contact Thug or any other co-defendants in the indictment until the case is concluded. In addition, he must testify if called upon but reserves his right to assert his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Unfunk is one of five defendants to accept some form of plea deal in the YSL Rico case so far. Gunna pleaded guilty to a racketeering conspiracy charge last week and was subsequently released from jail after being given a four-year sentence with one already served in prison. The rest of his sentence will be served in the form of 500 hours of community service. Gunna agreed to an Alfred plea, meaning he didn't admit to committing the crime, but acknowledged it was in his best interest to plead guilty. He too denied snitching in a statement issued following his release. While I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case, and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. My focus of YSL was entertainment, rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorified urban life in the Black community. Slime Life Shawty, Winnie Lee, Little Duke, Martinez Arnold, and YSL co-founder Walter Murphy have also taken plea deals, bringing the number of defendants down to 23 ahead of the January 9th trial. To Greer, I take no pleasure in us being here again, but do you recall when I sentenced you on the 20th of December that I went through certain things that you were expected to do at that point in time? Uh, you remember that? Do you remember? I'd like you to turn to page 13. All right, about line 11, the question I asked you was, do you understand that if you're placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit or any special conditions of probation without being subject to a revocation for the balance of the sentence? Your response was yes. Is that correct? All right. And in the next question on line 16, do you understand that you're not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, sir. All right, you remember we had that saying? I mean, we had that conversation about that? Okay, all right. You remember me talking to you about, this is me, the court. You shall possess no guns during the term of your sentence or any time after unless your right to have it or possession of a firearm has been restored. All right? And your answer? Yes, yes sir. Your Honor. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. As I mentioned earlier, I don't take pleasure in sending people to, to prison. It's part of the job and the responsibilities I have as part of, the, part of what potential consequences are uh, of people's actions. But in this particular circumstance, um, the state has alleged that you didn't pay your probation fees, and okay, and, and, and I, I hear, I've heard evidence that you haven't paid your, your fees, you owe $141.08 in fees, you haven't started any of the community service in this particular case, so I find those to be proven violations. But, you know, those are relatively minor. I mean, we still want you to adhere to all the conditions, but they're, of the three violations and the grade of those violations, they're not as severe as, as getting a new case, okay, a new charge. And part of the special condition was that you're not supposed to possess a gun. And the state was very clear. And in Ms. Pretty testified earlier about what the things that you were given in terms of your reporting in states one and two. And then Ms. Goodacre came in and, and, and specifically you signed acknowledgement of firearm in states three. 
and prohibition of possessing firearms or ammunition in states four. And then I saw states six and seven, which were the, which was the Glock nine that was taken from the vehicle, which you were the driver, shaded three to four inches from that. So I find that based upon the evidence presented in this case, the state has proven by preponderance of the evidence that you have violated your probation in the three means as set forth in paragraph four on the petition. Now, in terms of the revocation, your attorney has asked me to ask me to consider a revocation of two years. Um, and I certainly respect her and I certainly respect that, you know, you don't ask, you don't know unless you ask. Um, the, th the issue I find aggravating in this particular circumstances are several. You got arrested with a gun within six months of you being placed on probation. And I agree with the state that you're not a candidate for probation because all you had to do is just complete your probation and do what you're supposed to do. Instead, you were riding around the car with a gun in violation of your probation and what this court explicitly had conversations with you about, explicitly, on the record. And for that reason, sir, I'm going to revoke the balance of nine years and six months. And you will serve that in the Department of Corrections. And that will be the sentence of the court. Anything further? No, Your Honor. All right, that will be the sentence of the court. Okay, we're in recess. We are following new developments in the YSL RICO trial. One of the defendants facing new charges tonight after prosecutors say he tried to slip rapper Young Thug drugs in the middle of the courtroom. We got this surveillance video from the courtroom. Take a look at the highlighted part here. You can see Young Thug's co-defendant, Khalif Adams, hand his, uh, extend his hand rather toward the rapper there. And prosecutors allege that that is when he gave the rapper a Percocet right there in front of the entire courtroom. When someone is in a courtroom and he or she is on trial, they are not able to move from the council table unless and until a deputy sheriff or two escorts them. And oftentimes they're shackled. So this is beyond stunning. Adams is now facing additional charges because of all of this. Young Thug, whose legal name is Jeffrey Williams, is not. This case is still in the middle of jury selection, which was expected to take several weeks. Okay, anybody else? Any other administrative announcements uh, from, the, from the defense? Any other defense attorneys? Okay, all right. Um, State, um, I'm going to, it, it is the court's um, direction that um, given that we are going to trial next Wednesday to sever the following individuals. Um, Mr. Bradford, who was just arraigned and has no counsel. Mr. Fleetwood has no counsel. Mr. Garlington has no counsel. And Mr. McMillan has no counsel. So those four individuals I'm going to sever for purposes of trial. They'll have to be tried another time. I, I am going to work with Mr. Hoover um, to... Um, and uh, as well as Ms. Bernard to see if they can't get them lawyers. But we've been, attempt we've been attempting to get lawyers um, for a number of them for several months. So um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to probably sever those. Any other All right, counsels, good morning. Could everybody please be seated? Um, let me take up a couple of housekeeping matters to begin with. First one being uh, it has been brought to the court's attention that Mr. Manetta's uh, has been taken into custody this morning. Um, and I'll let that process kind of play out. However, due to that particular issue, um, the court's going to go ahead and sever Mr. Farley on its own motion. I'm doing that based upon a couple of cases. Um, Hill versus the state at 239 Georgia 278, as well as Harrington versus the state at 315 Georgia Appeals 101, which basically uh, state both cases read in tandem, say for the pro proposition that I, as the trial court, have discretion to sever even on my own motion. Um, now, the next update on the YSL trial, which was a little stunning to me, I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Now, we already talked about um, prior where they had tried to basically, well, arrest them. They actually did one of the uh, lawyers for one of the YSL um, defendants. It was the Spanish guy, the one that I like. He stood up for himself. You know, they try to say that he was being deep, bringing D rugs in the courtroom. They did an unlawful arrest because he had prescription medications and he, he literally had a smaller dose. 
than what was prescribed on the bottle. So they tried to get them all these charges. And it was just a whole big song and dance. And from what we were getting from that was it was supposed to be a circus. People prior to that, if you look at one of the reaction videos that we did, probably the first one of YSL, the second one, they talked about how they had a heads up that the prosecution office was going to do something wild. And then if y'all notice, shortly after you had actually with the lawyer getting locked up and that was around the same time where the other lawyer had to write a paper and that lawyer that got locked up was supposed to buy his his co-workers lunch and all types of stuff and all of this is ordered by the judge which is very out of pocket and unprecedented usually uh the judge if they're gonna hold you in contempt they're gonna make you pay a fine or make you go to jail it's not usually all of this song and dance so i do think that the actual um judge is on his high haters and he needs to tone down but that's my that that's just my opinion don't let him see it uh carl c mccoy he's gonna be like mad at me like be like what you say what you say you want to be answered Tonight, more Let's twists go. and turns in the young slime life gang and racketeering trial as jury selection stretches into its fifth month Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Tom Haynes, in for Russ Spencer. I'm Courtney Bryant. This week, an attorney had his laptop seized while in court, and now today, a Fulton County Sheriff's deputy has been arrested and booked into jail wow. in connection with the case. Fox News' Tyler Finger joining us live from the Fulton County Jail tonight with the night's new details. Tyler? Yeah, Tom, good evening to you. The Young Slime Life case continues to drag on and on, and we are no closer to a seated jury, let alone a verdict. Now today, a Fulton County Sheriff's deputy arrested, charged in connection to the case. Wow. Sunday will mark five months since jury selection began in the Young Slime Life gang and racketeering trial. But so far, there's still not a single juror seated. For those watching from the outside, like lawyer Tom Church, what's happening in the courtroom is head scratching. It's descending into chaos. And every day seems to bring a new level of, of disorder. Since court proceedings started in January, there have been several disruptions. Just this week, there have been two. On Wednesday, Fulton County deputies seized the laptop of defense attorney Eric Johnson, who represents Christian Eppinger. The arrest warrant alleged Eppinger used the laptop in court to communicate with other YSL members who aren't in custody. Oh. Then on Friday, Fulton County Sheriff's Deputy Akiba Stanley was arrested for allegedly using a phone to communicate with Eppinger, both in and out of the courtroom. The sheriff's office says she also visited his cell and attempted to smuggle things into the jail for him. But clearly there's been a breakdown here. Uh, we have attorneys getting arrested during these proceedings, having their computers seized. We have um, the judge who's holding lawyers left and right in contempt. Besides the disruptions, Emory Law Professor Lindsey Barron says complicating the case is finding a jury that could devote the time needed to serve since the trial could last months. She says trying each defendant separately could solve a lot of the issues because the case is having an impact beyond just that one courtroom. It's not just slowing things down in Fulton County. It is slowing things down across the state because these lawyers can't focus on the other cases that they have. The Fulton County Sheriff calls his deputy's actions, quote, reckless and says she's been fired. As for the jury selection for the YSL trial, that's expected to continue again next week. We're live at the Fulton County. Wow. On